I figured it out. I figured it out. I had myself muted. They changed the software. I have no clue why it comes in muted. I have two spots to mute myself. Oh, how piss. Well, hopefully it gets better. So I'm assuming you can all hear me now. So hopefully. <laughs> I thought it was my mic that went dead. Well, what I was saying was it's another Saturday night. So I wanted to see who was on here. So and kind of comment as always. But guess what? You all commented no sound. So Corey is here. My aunt Linda is here. Paul is here as always. Hey, nine people. We are up from last week. So, oh, well, like I said, it's another Saturday night. So I guess there's at least nine people in the world who want to listen to me ramble this evening, right? So that is a okay. So, yeah, hopefully there's some non photo people on here this evening and we'll kind of go from hey, Peggy, Becky, as always. It's always good to see you guys. Thank you for the support as always. Same with Paul, Corey, all you guys. Hey, Connie, I was wondering if you were out there. Finally getting used to this, just talking to the camera thing. And there's like no one. I can't see anybody. That's what is so weird. So, you know what? We will just get rolling here because I have about 48 slides. And it's all photos for the most part. So no photo. Well, I'm not going to say that there's no photo talk tonight. But if you got photo questions like, hey, how did it, how did you do this? Or, hey, whatever, whatever. Just, you, as you know, throw them up in the comments and I'll take a look. So, ah, Evan, here to see the photos as always, right? The, I've never had so many, like, when are you posting photos messages on Facebook and in person for people who saw me. So, um, hopefully they will delight you. I went through a whole bunch of them this morning as I threw this together. So I got to get coffee. Um, so we'll get popping here. Let me throw these up. So I, I don't know. I've called this like 16 different things, but now we're going to call it the Southwest Exploring America. So I don't know if you've ever been like New Mexico, Arizona. So kind of, kind of the whole like backstory to this whole kitten caboodle was I kind of a, a little impulsive. So I don't know if anybody had saw a previous post, but I was so delightfully diagnosed with ADHD. that probably answers a lot of things for a lot of people right now, back in, I don't know, middle of the summer at the VA. So it explained a lot of things. So I was, I can hear all of your lies. Thanks, John. <laughs> so I was, I would, I, I got this thing. I don't know what they call it. It's like hyper, hyper something. And it's where I get fixated on something and I keep researching and researching and researching until I either do it or don't. And most of the time I do it. So as kind of a backstory to this whole kit and caboodle was I got bored one day on lunch at work in the truck. So I was like scrolling and I was like looking at national parks on TikTok and I saw white sands. I'm like, Hmm. I'm like, I wonder where that's at. And I'd come back to it. And this was several months ago. So I come back and forth, back and forth to it. And I'm like, what? and then one day I got bored and I'm like, I wonder how much it is to fly to White Sands. <laughs> so then one day I'm at work and I'm submitting some PTO and I'm like, wow, I got a decent amount of PTO. Long story short, I ended up on an airplane and ended up in the Southwest. So it was, it was fun. I'm definitely going to do it again. It was, I like these quick trips, you know, leave on a Friday, come back on a Monday and you have two days at the park. So, so I had, I was going to go to Joshua tree, but that was a little bit, it seems like once you hit Vegas and West, everything gets a lot more expensive to fly like 150 to 200 more sometimes. Um, so I was just like, nope, but it's really cheap to fly into El Paso on Southwest. I'll tell you that. Um, it was a lot less than American. So I did drive to Omaha. I uh, stayed at my mom's house overnight and then we went from there. So well, I will stop rambling on, I guess, and we'll hop in. So, because Evan said he's here to see the photos, like everybody is, I'm pretty sure. So, a little bit of uh, the backstory. You know how I like quotes. So, I had to throw up here wherever there is light, one can photograph. And if you're a photographer, especially in the landscape, you know, a lot of times we go out at like sunrise to a couple hours later, and then we call it quits, and then we show up at you know, a couple, three-ish hours before sunset and shoot, and then we go home. And we forget all that time in between. So I had a lot of time in between 10 a.m. and, say, 3-ish p.m. at the park. So it really forced me to, like, look at things differently and where I normally don't photograph times of the day, harsh light. So, you know, I thought it was a good quote. It kind of rounded up a lot of, of the trip for me. 
And if you've just joined in, if you've got questions, pop them in. Like, how'd you do this? What'd you do? Whatever, fine with me. I'll answer them. There's no secrets with me. So let's go over some stats. Yeah, just because we can. Um, I thought these were kind of fun. I do this a lot on like a lot of my trips. I just kind of think of things like this. I have no clue why. But so on the whole trip, so really theoretically like two and a quarter days, I took 1,382 photographs at the park. Well, outside the park and then around Alamogordo, that kind of stuff. Um, I flew a round trip of 20, well, total trip was 2,500 miles. And I drove a total of 866 miles. I flew into El Paso, drove up to Alamogordo and uh, slept in a Jeep Compass for three days. Um, and total time at the park time was like two days. So that was really fun. Uh, three and a half hours via I-15 South from Vegas to Joshua. I know, John. I almost went down to uh, the other park, uh, Carlsbad Caverns, I think. But I ended up, I didn't plan that part real well. So, oh, well. We all live and learn, right? There we are. So let's start out in New Mexico in El Magordo. So... If you've never been to Alamogordo, it's a, I thought it was a weird town. Um, being in the military and being at a few bigger bases and training and so on and so forth over my time, usually when you equate a military base with a town, there's lots of things to do. There's lots of stuff around. Alamogordo is really weird. It was really, it felt like a really small town, but it wasn't. Um, it's home to Holloman Air Force Base. So if you don't know anything about White Sands, there's this place called White Sands Missile Range that the government owns. And they like to shoot off missiles and things like that. The U.S. Army does it. Um, actually, White Sands Missile Range pretty much is, encompasses the whole park and I-70. So you have to check like a week-ish before and double check to make sure the park isn't closed for two hours because they're testing something, usually missiles. Um, so I actually was looking at the website today and it was closed between like 12 and 3 while the government did their, their fun. So but it was kind of fun, uh, kind of a funny story. I was looking at some images as I was editing after the trip, and I thought I had dust spots on my sensor, which I did, but they looked very odd to me. So as I looked into it, it was actually two uh, Air Force jets from Holloman Air Force Base out in the horizon. So it's, I guess one lady said it's not uncommon to hear like sonic booms while you're in the park. I didn't hear anything, but yeah, Holloman Air Force, but it was kind of cool, um, the area, especially around... Alamogordo. I stayed probably a half hour from the park at I think something Lee State Park. Um, you'll see a photo here momentarily of it. So, but little back story on good old New Mexico and Alamogordo. So let's start with the first photo. So this one I named Lunar Vista. So this was literally my first, I don't know, first, I think it was like the night of the park, the first day I was there. So this is like, I don't know, about 35-ish minutes from the park. So this was literally what I woke up to every morning. I'd pop out of the good old Jeep Compass and I had this like mountain range. I don't, I want to, I can't think of what this one was. There's two ranges. There's one like west and east. And I can't, I think this might be the Sacramento, but don't hold me to that. So Oliver Lee State Park. Yes. Lisa. Yes. Yes. That's where I was. <laughs> so all my messages come in like super slow. So, but yeah, I thought this was kind of fun because when do we get the moon and enough light where we don't have to, you know, do our thing and tripods. So I thought it was kind of fun and something a little bit different for an image for me anyway. Come on. Oh, yes. So, oh, this thing keeps blocking my, oh, can I move that? Nope, I cannot move that. Oh, well, um, I will just won't repeat the names because I can't read them now. Um, but you'll be able to, you can read, you can see at the bottom. So this was on my way to the park. Uh, well, not White Sands, but on the way to the state park that I stayed at. Um, and anybody who knows me loves no, I love decrepit, crunchy ass old things. So um, I actually saw this. Well, the first, yeah, the first day I got there, I don't know how I missed it. I drove right past it. I guess I was too excited to get to my camp spot and check it out and then figure out something to do. But um, I thought this was kind of fun. It was 
New Mexico was interesting to me because it was like, uh, what do I want to say? It wasn't like a bad thing. It was good. Um, I mean, for me anyway, because I love this whole old, you know, everything has like life there and like even old decrepit things and things that people have abandoned. It was like a playground for me. So you'll need, see another couple photos here in a moment. But um, these, all these three areas are really close together. But it was really hard not to like, drive and like want to stop every five minutes because they found something i think the coolest thing i loved was all the old cars that you find in like fields here or all like all the windows are broke out they're super rested because obviously we have rain and snow and all that and we get rust on these cars and they eventually fade away and new mexico no it was like super cool old cars and just like sun-baked paint so it was super cool i thought it was kind of drive around and just see i'd like to go back to new mexico just to drive around literally and just see where i could go So the next one here, oh, I can read that one. Echoes of the Game is what I named it. Um, like I said, it's old and crunchy, so it's my kind of thing. But this was one, um, this was probably about evening time. I think I was, yeah, I was coming back from the park. Um, yeah, probably late afternoon, if I remember right. And I thought it was kind of cool. You know, I had the old uh, lamp coming over. You have the, the whole basketball um, who, but I, what I love about it, it's got a little bit of tilt to it. It all throws everything off just a little bit. So if you've got questions about any of this, throw them up. You know how I like questions. But uh, I thought it was kind of fun. Um, there is like, I don't know what I want to say. Like the whole road up to Oliver Lee on the left side just had lots of cool little, little blurbs. Like things I had to like look for and not wreck the vehicle. <laughs> so uh, let's see here. Ah, uh, yes. Walter's last cook. <laughs> if you know, let, let's throw out a question. Does anybody know where that name came from? Where the inspiration came from? Walter's last cook. I won't go on until somebody at least uh, answers that correctly or incorrectly. Um, I have to give my uh, co-worker Jake some credit for this one. No, no comments whatsoever. Uh, distracted driving while looking for cool pictures. Exactly. I should get it. I almost thought about selling bumper stickers. It was like photographer on board, you know, um, makes frequent stops or something. But anybody have a guess on where this uh, Breaking Bad? That is right, Lisa. So I don't know. That's what I, I that's not what I thought of when I uh, um, took it. I just loved the the whole old trailer thing and you know, all the crunchy grass in the front. And I showed this to a coworker, Jake, and he's like, ah, oh, it reminds me of Breaking Bad. So that I have to get a little homage to that. So um, it was fun. I, I That's one thing I liked a lot about New Mexico was even between everything, there's character. Everything has character. I think as you're a photographer and you're kind of in the Midwest, we kind of have to search for things. And this was just like a playground. I mean, for me, because there was stuff around every corner that I could photograph that I enjoyed and it wasn't a barn. Um, so like I said, it was one of those kind of fun things. This one was a little bit towards probably duskish time. So um, like I said, I could drive around this place all day long. I would love to uh, maybe, maybe I thought about flying back and just driving route 66, the Arizona, New Mexico part. I think that would be cool. Um, if anybody just saw my recent image of um, God, Missouri Valley at the, uh, Rialto, that's it. Um, I posted that up there. I'd like, I'm into like neon all of a sudden. So I went out with my friend Jeff last night and we wandered parking garages in Cedar Rapids and stuff. So maybe we'll see what pops up along from here in the next couple of weeks. But if you know of any cool neon signs like original neon or something that looks original in Cedar Rapids, shoot me a message. Oh, are these populated areas? That's a good question, Paul. Um, because it reminded me a lot, what I want to say. I mean, it's outside around where I was. I think it was populated. Not like what we're used to. I mean, even in Iowa, you can go a quarter of a mile. I mean, on the edge of your like cities, towns, whatever you want to call them, there was like little pockets of houses. Um, this area here seemed to be like a lot of pockets of no one lives here anymore kind of thing. So... Um, but on the left side of the road, everything seemed abandoned. On the right side of the road, everybody had like 
um, housing. So it was very interesting. I did go into Alamogordo and drive around. That's a really cool town to drive around in. It's very weird because it's like everything's kind of like long and stretched out on one road. But I mean, from driving from El Paso to Alamogordo, I didn't see a lot of anything. But a lot of that is U.S. Uh, Army training ground. So I thought I was running into like a dust storm. And it was actually a bunch of guys in a up armored Humvees and, um, well, I can't think of the version of whatever that no one cares what kind of truck it was, <laughs> but they were, they were, I don't know, they were up and down dirt roads and stuff. And they're, I'm assuming they were all training. They were out of Fort Bliss. So, um, oh yes, John says, yes, Route 66. I'd love to drive that. I, you know, I just want to drive the Southwest portion. I don't care about the rest to be honest. So, um, maybe Oklahoma would be fun. <laughs> Ah, so now let's get into white sand. So I really, this is where a majority of my, my clickety clicking took place. Um, I think I got some stats here on white sands too, because don't we all love it? So if you're not familiar with white sands, what I thought was funny was, so back in, uh, what is it, 1933, Herbert Hoover declared white sands a national monument, not a park, a monument. So up till, I think it was 2019, they made it a national park so it's really funny you'll drive around and like half the signs say national monument and the other half say national park and it's really not sand if you do look into it it's actually gypsum it's not sand but they call it white sands but this place i mean i think what was it what did they say 2021 they had a record 782,000 uh people at the park so i went obviously in february and I think average February total was like 20,000 people. I was like, oh my God, that still seems a lot. But when I was there, there was little to nobody. I mean, there was cars. But the one thing that's really cool with White Sands is it's a small park. Uh, well, it's 176,000 acres or 275 square miles. It's really not big compared to other national parks like Yellowstone, Glacier, things like that. But what's super cool is you got most of the paved road. And then you get to a spot where it goes from pavement straight to just like packed gypsum um and the roads are super wide there so they plow them like snow and that's the other thing like this gypsum is like snow like there's a couple times i caught myself thinking why is it so warm but snowy and my mind's like that idiot it's not snow it's sand i literally had to wear sand or sunglasses a lot I mean, it was, it gave me a headache the first like 30 minutes I was out of my car. So I thank God I brought my sunglasses. But another thing with uh, White Sands that's super interesting, it's one of the very few parks that has hours. So right now it's, well, it was 7 to 7. So they opened at 7 a.m. and closed at 7 p.m. So a lot of people said, well, did you do any Astro stuff? No, it would have been perfect because there's no light pollution there at all, more than likely. But the problem with that is they closed at 7. So I'm assuming the only way you're going to be able to do any like astro or night photography is you would have to camp in the park, which you can, but it's backcountry camping only. And right now it's shut down for an unknown amount of time. But I got there each morning about, I don't know, first morning I was there at like 6.45 and there was about nine cars in front of me. And then I got there at like 6.30 the next day and there's only like two or three cars in front of me but they open right on 7 a.m um but the next guy though the second day opened up early he saw because we were all actually lined up on i-70 at that point so they ended up there's like a turn off there for the park and everybody's backed up there so he pulled up and opened it up so it's it's a very very scattered park too if you get in there there's not there's only one flushable bathroom and that's at the visitor center um, visitor center is right on the right or going on the right side when you come in. So, and then you go down and pay your dues and go through. So, I mean, you really literally, if you're not there to take photos, you could literally do the park in probably half a day easy. Um, there's lots of hiking and stuff, but everybody's here to see pictures, not listen to me blab. So on to the next one. Um, so uh, sunrise over Sacramento. So this, I believe if I did my math right and looking at the map, this was, um, the Sacramento mountain range. This is the bat. Well, this is like pretty like with like maybe a mile into the park. So this was the morning that he let us in early, like 10 minutes early. So the sun had not rose yet. So I think sunrise was at seven or seven Oh five. So it was super cool. So you got there and because the first day I got there for sunrise, 
it was up already and you lost that really good morning glow, that nice um, orangish light really quickly because it doesn't last very long anywho. So, but this was one, um, I always tell people if you're out taking photos, like I always tell if you're a photographer, like look up, look down, look left, look right. I mean, like don't see the whole world at your height. I always say, look behind you. This was a look behind you moment. Um, it was when I popped through the park and, you know, I'm not going to claim that all these are the best photos in the world either, but, oh, what is gypsum? Um, well, oh, the gypsum, ah, I'm not Miss scientific. I know they make drywall out of it, Diane. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, this was one of those kind of early morning, you know, nice sunrises. The one thing that's really, really weird, and I don't know, I see it in a lot of photos, and I don't know if it's like a desert thing, um, but everything is bluish. Like the haze out in the horizon is always blue. And this morning we didn't have a lot of it, like that bluish color, which was super nice. And you'll probably see that in a few photos coming up as well. But sunrise over Sacramento, kind of a fun thing. Come on. Ah, trailblazing dawn. So this is that nice, wonderful morning light. Now, this literally is like right off the road. There's a little hiking area that you can go up, but you have to go up with like a oomph of sand. And that's the other thing with this is this park is if you hike, you better get used to hiking in sand. And there are no paths, none, no trails. You have to look from pole to pole. And there's a story behind that in a little bit too. So, but this was one of those um, right early in the morning as you take a left into the park is a little gravel road. You can take up to like some bathrooms and a, that little, I can't think of what they call it, living dunes or something hike. So if you don't get out of the car, like the best place at this park is you have to get out. So it's kind of like Badlands, all the national parks. You should get out of your vehicle and like hike a little bit. Um, that's where the coolest stuff is. But I thought this was kind of fun. Um, this was the other thing, no clouds. What's so freaking ever? Like after a certain time in the morning, all the clouds just go poof. Like I had these clouds for, I don't know, 45 minutes and then they just dissipated and gone. So you'll see some of these images don't have clouds. So I don't know, maybe I need to be in there in the summer, but. Come on. Ah, Aerial Symphony. So, yes. So, this park, what is super hard too is when you're photographing it, it's white. Everything's white. So, if you've ever had to photograph white on white, or it's a challenge because obviously your camera looks at it, it's like, oh, I want to make it really dark. And here you you got to, you have to trick the camera the entire time. Um, I actually, did, if you're from the photo people here, a lot of it I like, I was shooting on aperture priority. Um, so I could select aperture, get my depth of field, let camera kind of figure out the rest besides ISO. It was a lot better than manual, to be honest. Um, but this is kind of fun. You'll see a lot of these have odd crappings. You'll see a lot of crapping this evening that's like long, just because I felt like that was the homage to the park. It kind of, um, everything just seemed, had depth to it. I mean, it was rolling sand over and over um everything was just long so i kind of cropped them all that way yeah ah yes so bare bones i think this is the only freaking tree in the entire park um <laughs> i so this is if i remember right it's an iron wood cotton or iron cottonwood so i guess as i was doing some digging today i guess the soil is very acidic well, if you call it soil there. So very little things grow. So there's about, th the only things that were there was a few trees, yucca plants, and a few dead bushes. Yucca plants galore. So if you love yucca plants, it's your place to go. Oh yeah, shooting and raw, John. Yep, always shooting raw. Makes life a lot easier if you screw up. <laughs> but um, this one was a hard one because I had to really try to tame that blue down in the back and I kind of finally got it done. But I thought this was kind of cool. I, there was like no big trees, you know, like we're used to like big round trees. And these, I think the biggest trees I saw were like round, like that big. So it was a very interesting place. Um, the hard part with this park too, is there's not a lot of interest in the sense of like finding a subject to put in there because everything's so desolate. It's like, it's a desert. It's like, a, I think I read today, they call it like a desert in a desert. Um, but yeah, there's nothing there. I did see some really cool photos. They say the best time to go to this park is in the fall because the cottonwoods go orange. I don't know what they're smoking, to be honest, because there's, I've seen one picture of a tree with 
cool orange leaves on it. I don't know where the rest of them are because I didn't find them. Um, and the other thing too, is if you really want to get away from people, you got to hike and go, go, go. So um, any of the easy hikes, another kind of tip too is hiking. It seems as the farther you go into the park, the harder it gets. So the easy hikes are at the beginning and the hardest one is at the end. Now that one's five miles of sand. Ah, so another one of those look behind you moments because I literally was photographing these stupid ripples in the sand and I loved it. And I thought it was the greatest thing in the world. And then as I'm back there, I'm looking at these shadows of these yucca plants from the sunrise coming up. And I went to like turn to grab my bag to pull it through the sand to grab something. And I saw this. I'm like, well, there it is. So um, the other thing that you have to contend with this park as well is if, if you want it, like if you do any research on this park and you see photos they're very clean like there's no footprints in the sand like you got to go way out in the middle of nowhere to get that and the hard part is you have to visualize a shot get out there take it and then if you're like, i don't like it i have another angle well you've just walked in the frame and now you have all these footprints so you kind of have to think two steps ahead <laughs> no puns intended um but it was kind of a it was a very interesting place just because the clouds go quickly and that sand goes and that sun that golden sun just poof, all within 45 minutes goes together. Any other questions so far? Oh, this one. If anybody's heard me talk about landscape in the past, I despise people in my landscapes. I just don't like it. <laughs> Never have. But guess what these people are? So I don't know why I took this. I just took it. Um, this was on the far, far end of the park where there's like, you'll see them. I called it uh, dune riders because... I don't know if I like this, but the park says you can take a sled and slide down the sand dunes. Well, it's not like snow. So I read a thing, you have to wax the crap out of these plastic boards. If you do go and you want to slide down the sand dunes, take your own because if they charge you for one, it's like 25 or 30 bucks for a stupid plastic, plastic disc. <laughs> but I thought this photo was nice to kind of show everybody like how big and expansive like this park is because I don't think photos do it justice because it's so freaking big, like desolate and just out there. So these people are probably, I don't know, about six foot tall. Oh, thank you. Love the contrast with the blue and that splashy red. Huh. So thank you, John. Um, but that is one of those, like, this is probably where I spent the most of the time in the park. One, because I'll tell you a story here in a moment why I was out there the most time. And two, it was just away from a lot of the people. Like a lot of people just like get in their car and they drive the, the loop and they're done. Um, and what's crazy about this park is you have dunes all over and then you'll walk to like those first set of dunes. And then it's just after that, it's just expansiveness of dunes and, and gypsum. It's super cool. So it's one of those things you have to get out of the park to, or out of the car to experience it. Come on. Ah, yucca plants. Um, so I, it was really hard. This was one of those photos, not like it was hard to take or anything, but it was just one of those things of there's nothing there. There's nothing of interest. So out of like six to what I said, 1,382 photos. I mean, a lot of them have like the, the most, the closest thing of interest is has to be either like light, like shadows, or it has to be yucca plants. And what's really weird is a lot, some parts of the park you'll see in some upcoming images, the scene is really smooth. And then other times it's ripply from the, the, uh, the wind so it's super cool um the other weird thing about white sands too is when you're hiking like sometimes you'll be walking and it's hard and then all of a sudden it's like super sinky sand so um again one of those odd odd things it's just like i said an odd park but i think probably one of the most interesting most challenging parks for hiking and just being a photographer because it really made me think very made me think very minimalistic and i think that's why my images lately are very minimalistic. Come on. Ah, this one. This is probably one of my favorite ones. Um, this was one of those moments where I'm like driving. What did I call this one? Ah, the last breath. Everything is dead there. Or maybe just perceives to be dead because it's winter. <laughs> um, but as you hike, there's not like, I don't know if this is a group of trees at one time or a bush or what the hell it was. But what I loved about this was very simplistic. Um, my original thought on this one was going to be black and white 
And then I worked it to death in Lightroom and I gave up on it and I said, it's not black and white. I don't know what to do with it. So I came back to it one day and I thought, you know what? It's very minimalistic. Um, so I worked on the bottom half and then I, I had a polarizer on it too for a while because I wanted to get the sky really deep, deep blue to go black. And then my whole thing was I was going to have contrast of super black and super white and maybe get those little dead sticks that are up there kind of like to pop off, but it didn't work. So I just kind of gave up on it and ended up with this one and I love it. So it's very simplistic. I I have it in square too, but I don't know. This might be kind of fun on a metal blown up really big. So talking about when shooting white on white and there being nothing of interest, this weird little bush. Um, this was one of those where I got out of the car, ran over to the sand dune, was taking one picture, saw another, and then got this guy. So this one was fun um, just because I, a lot of people like stray away from harsh light because we get harsh light and dark shadows and we don't like it. And I think if you always tell people don't ever turn up an image, really find something you can photograph. And right here it is, I thought. Um, because I think I had some photos where I didn't have much of a shadow. And then they look like they float. So it gave it some depth. But again, simplistic images. It's a very minimalistic place to photograph. No questions, comments, concerns? Okay. I'll just keep pulling along. Ah, again, minimalistic. Guess what? A yucca plant. <laughs> um, this one I like just because they had the curve. And again, you have to put something of interest in your images and and guess what it was? It was the yucca plant. So, you know, one of those things, but oh, great, great separation of the white. Um, I know. I wonder how that would print, John. That was my thing. That one would probably be a challenge to print. I'd probably have the lab at like ACI or somebody do it because I printing off this thing over here. I'd probably burn more ink than anything, but but again, just like you'll notice a lot of these are just simplistic as I get de deep down. Ooh, excuse me down into the image a little bit more, you'll start to see some more abstracty, artsy, fartsy stuff. But I like this one. I call this one party of one, please, because there's only one <laughs> little yucca plant. So I like the sand texture. Yes. Oh, this one. So story time. Oh, B said, did you have to do anything to keep dust and the gypsum out of your lens? Good question. So uh, no, I bet you, hold on. A hot mess in my office. I had one of these. Oh, it's, eh, you can't see it, but it's a UV filter. B. Um, I always have UV filters on. Now, the biggest concern was I have one camera body now, so I had to switch lenses. Um, and I was like, hmm. So they always say about blowing gypsum, and that freaked me out. So I did take some we like one time use rain covers just in case we had blowing sand, but I always have a filter on it. So I didn't have to worry about anything on the front of the lens B, but um, it is one of those things that it was a worry. Um, I didn't really want to switch lenses out in the blowing. I mean, even if it's not blowing sand, there's still things in the air like gypsum probably it's going to get on the sensor, but I was just really careful. Um, I kind of, had my lens ready in the bag with the lens cap slightly loosened. And then when I took it off the body, I kind of put my hand over the mount and then kind of one handed it down. And then I kind of did the whole whoop and, you know, kind of thing. So I would say if I were to go back again, I'm thinking, so I'm going in May to Mesa Verde National Park down in Colorado and great sand dunes. I'm probably going to rent a second camera body maybe like a Nikon Z7 II just for shits and giggles, um, or maybe a Z9. <laughs> Probably won't. They'll be too damn expensive for a week. But that was one of those, just so I have a second body, because I don't like switching lenses. Long story short. Um, John says, like transparencies, the computer monitors let you see a wider range than you can get with a print. Exactly. Um, yeah, did I? So Paul asked me, hey, did you carry a tripod on this trip? Yes. So when I did Zion and we flew out there in May, I did not. This one, it was me, myself, and I. Um, so um, I took it with me. It was with me. But guess what, Paul? Secret between all 14 of us on here. I didn't use the damn thing. Um, <laughs> I didn't. I should have, but I didn't. Oh, well. Tom says, did I meet any other photographers that were interesting? I did not. I did not. Well, out of the two days I was there, 
somebody who I would register as a photographer, like somebody lugging a bunch of gear around and it's out there at seven in the morning, like me with one guy from Utah, um, driving a Jeep. And I didn't run into him after that. We never spoke. I don't know if he even saw me, but it's really weird because like when I went to Glacier in June, you can't swing a dead cat without hitting a fricking photographer. I had never seen so many Nikon Z9s in the wild until I went to Glacier. It was nuts. But you, yeah, usually you run into some people and you'll get the interesting photographers who want to talk to you. And then I don't like to poo-poo on people but and say there's wannabe photographers, but there's always that one person. You're like, I bet you can see the moon with that lens. And I know, no, I can't. But thanks for the interest. Um, I didn't have any of those people. I don't mind those people. I always love, you know, as everybody knows, I love sharing photography with people. But when I'm in my zone, I don't really care to share with non-photographers per se. Um, hey, Sid. Awesome. I'm glad you joined. So, yeah, it was, I didn't meet any other interesting photographers. I didn't see any photographers at all other than that one guy, even outside of the park. So, it was I don't know. It was kind of an odd. I thought about that too. Oh, well, let me get back to this. So, I was answering questions. So, uh, what did I name this? Oh, Lost in Wonder. So, um, hey, Mary. So, yeah, the reason this is called Lost was I was lost. <laughs> so, I will tell you in this part, it's very disorienting. Like, you get one dune, and then you're down into, like, a valley, and then you're up. I'm glad I got lost, because this is what I found. So, I was trying to, like, it's dead silent there. You don't hear things. Nothing. So, you can't hear people talking. And all you can see is these little people all the way out on the distance like this. So I had to keep going. And then you get down to a valley, where I call a valley, or like a little flat part. And then you got to remember kind of where you're going. And then you can't follow foot tracks because guess what? There's about 18 million of them going all over the place. So pick one and go. But I figured the worst case scenario, I'd keep walking. I had enough food and water with me to go to the end. If I went to the edge of the park, I'd run into the white sands missile test range and i'm pretty sure they watched that like a hawk so somebody would have found me but or they would have figured out i was gone when they found my car at the park but i was okay in the end but it was kind of it was a chuckle but i'm glad i did it this one um this is probably one of my more favorites of the images because it reminds me of very like sahara desert ish and you know that sun i used an aperture of f16 to get that star effect and it just gives you that hot feel. I would not want to be here in the summer. I don't know. When I was here, it was about 30-ish in the morning. And by afternoon, it was t-shirt weather. So it was super nice. So it was a layer kind of thing. And then as you got obviously closer to dusk, it got cold again. But it was perfect timing. I mean, I'd love to go back again, maybe a little warmer, but not 95 or 100. Ah, so desert contours. I told you you'd see some more abstracty, long, kind of elongated, uh, what do I call it, panoramic. So this I cropped down. I did not use, I did not stitch. Oh, Becky said, love this one. Well, I don't know which one it is because it's all delayed, but thank you. <laughs> um, this was one of those that um, I wish, the one thing I would recommend if you go to a park like this or any place with sand dunes, I use my 70 to 200 to eight a lot to like compress and bring everything in. And unfortunately I wish I had longer like 400 because then you could really isolate some of this stuff. Um, so I had to isolate a lot of it by cropping. So is what it is, but lessons learned. So maybe I will rent a 100 to 400 when I go out to sand dunes um, in May. Come on. Ah, contrasting horizons. So this is this is what I thought the park was all going to be like for me. It was black and white, black and white, black and white. So very abstracty in a sense. Um, this was all about light, um, really. You know, it was that, I don't know, I don't even remember what day it was, time of day. Um, I should look at my metadata. But it's one of those where you get those nice highlights right across. I did take the shadows down a little bit. Um, to kind of the point where most people wouldn't because you lose detail, but it's art. You can do what the hell you want. Um, and then I cropped it down very narrow. So so in the far back, that light spot is obviously our sun. Um, so it was probably later in the day. Then you got your mountain range, and then you got your sand dune, and then you got some more sand dune in the front. So a nice layered image. But this is what I wanted everything to be. And then I found out that, man, not everything's going to work this way. But, hey, I got one. And that's all that matters. I got one image that I kind of want. So, 
Ah, abstracty stuff. So that was the other thing I planned on doing was mostly abstract work. And then again, it proved me wrong. Um, but this is just a sand dune, an edge of a sand dune and uh, the sky behind. So I was going to do this one black and white too, but I don't know. I didn't like it. So guess what? It is color. Um, what else do I want to say about this? I don't know. I just like it simplistic. Um, I think as, I don't know, artists, photographers, whatever we want to call ourselves these days, I think we kind of switch and kind of where we're going. Like I've been out lately doing like Iowa E. Barney stuff, but um, last night I wandered around for, I don't know, two hours in parking garages. That's fun. Um, so it's weird how we change things for a while. But like I said, I get like hyper fixed on things um, and kind of roll with stuff. But I've kind of been in, kind of challenging myself now this year. I think I've watched every YouTube video on minimalistic photography too. So, but something a little minimal, something different. Ah, yes, this one. Um, this one was heavily edited, I'm not gonna lie. So um, I used a colored grad filter in Color Effects Pro to bring the sky down. Um, this one I have actually in black and white. You may have seen that I posted it um, for my cell phone when I was down there, but I don't know. I didn't like it in the end, so I made it color. So kind of, but I don't know, it kind of made me, I don't know what John thinks, but kind of reminds me of old school transparency a little bit. I don't know, just the coloring. But the one thing there is you have to really work with like light and shadow because if not, everything's just white and it's hard to see in your final images. So uh, sunset oasis. So I'm not a sunset. I think sunsets and sunrises are way too damn cliche in the world of photography. Sorry. Um, to each their own. I mean, I don't like, I shouldn't say that. That seems, I shouldn't have said that. That seems bad. What I should say is I don't make it my main subject. That's a better way. Um, ah, yes. Looks like old ectochrome. I do know something, John. Um, I don't lie about everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't make it my, my thing, you know, I was, I was looking for an epic sunset to be honest, because everybody shows you these like God beams coming through the clouds and all this crazy ass crap. And then I get there and I'm like, there's not a damn cloud to be seen. And I'm thinking, oh, they disappeared and they come back. They didn't. So I love this because you just had that nice sun, golden sun coming over and it just hit that little highlight right across the top of that dune. Um, so something different. I know you're messing with me, John. I was I was gonna say if I did if I didn't like you messing with me, I could just block you on my Facebook page, but I won't. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Sunset Oasis. That was I don't know, fun one. So shifting shadows. Um, this was actually on the the other kind of up over the hump of the other thing that I just did. Um, but this is the this is literally the landscape. It's flat, and all of a sudden there's something, and then it's flat. Um, and I like the I did bring up my shadows a little bit um, because obviously you got the sun coming from over here in the east, um, or no west. Sorry, rises in the east, sets in the west. Whatever. See, I lied, John. <laughs> um, but I lightened up those shadows. They were a little dark, but it was one of those. I don't know. Like I said, all those long craps. Um, I just felt, I don't, when I go to photograph something, I don't always know what the end, I'm not going to tell you that I know I look at the scene and I know what it's going to be. I don't, I would say 90% of the time I don't. So sometimes I do. And this was one of those. It was not, this was one I actually like looked over because I kept passing it. And then I go back and one of my mantras is I go all the way to the beginning and I look at things and I edit some things. And then I go all the way back to the beginning and I go through and edit things. And I find more and more and more and more or things. I'm like, well, that was a dumb idea yesterday. And well, how in the hell did I miss this? So that was one of those, what in the hell did I miss kind of things. So um, how late in the morning can you shoot? Um, like in the evening or like morning, morning? Like, I mean, I shot all day, um, but I felt like for the most part, part 10 a.m it started to go sour in a sense like the lighting was getting more harsh i would say seven to nine was primo time um i felt and that like extremo best of the best primo time like icing on the cake is that first 45 minutes and i'm not going to say that i may or may not have gone over the speed limit to get to a few places i don't know <laughs> um but uh painter's palette 
I, this was one I don't I don't do a lot of silhouettes, um, but this is one. This is a very good image. I should have shown you the before one, but I didn't. This is a thing where like John was saying, like screens can see more than like the print. Well, the sometimes there's crap in our images. Um, yeah, early and late seems to be best for good light. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, early morning is the best light and then later in the evening. I mean, that's the mantra of us landscape people. And it's true, but you can find some uh, winter winners in the middle of that on occasion. But sometimes our camera sees more than we can, well, our eyes see more than the camera can see. Um, but then what's crazy is this was kind of that bluish golden -y sunset, but it was all one color. And I went in and I popped the dehaze in Lightroom, which takes out the haze in the sky, and it started bringing this out. And I'm like, what on earth? Um, and that's what it looked like when I was there. It was nuts. So, but I thought it was kind of a fun one. Um, again, it's just bushes and yucca plants because that's all it's there. Huh. All right, what is this one? I can't read this one. I don't remember what I named it. You guys can read. Um, this was kind of that same area where I took the other one where the little highlight of the dunes. But again, this was not a late. This was a little earlier in the sunset. So I photographed the entire time, probably way before I need to. And then once it peters out over the horizon, I'm done. Um, because that will tell you once that sun goes over those, those mountains, it <clears throat> done. There is... There's nothing you can, I mean, not saying yes, nothing you can't photograph because I'll show you something here momentarily, but it, a lot of the light goes away. So it's very flat and there's no color. So not saying you can't, if you can be creative, you can pull things out. See, I told you there's nothing to shoot after the sun goes down. Um, so shrouded in mystery. I don't know why I came up with that one, but um, this was a not planned photograph. This was one of those that I was going to leave. This was after these previous sunset -y photos. I was going to leave and go back to camp, and I was actually going to run into Wally World in Alamogordo on the way back. And I thought, hell, you're here. Don't regret it. How many times have I regret not doing something with the camera or just in general in life, and I didn't do it and wish I had done it? So I'm like, you're here. There's no one waiting for you. There's no one waiting in the car saying, I got to go to the bathroom. I'm hungry. I want to go back. I'm tired. No, me, myself, and I. Um, so guess what? I thought, hell, drive through the park. I'm driving along, and I actually had to go to the bathroom. So I was like, well, there's a bathroom up here. I've passed about 18,000 times since I've been here. And all of a sudden, I see all these people, and guess what they had? Not cameras, iPhones. And they're all, like, standing up here. And I thought, well, that's kind of a neat shot. Maybe I should, let's, like, take a panoramic kind of crop of everybody with their iPhones held up. And then I was like, then I thought, well, what the hell are they photographing? And what do they think? And then my mind crosses, well, they're using their iPhones. They're not photographers. So they can't be interesting. What was this damn moon? Um, <laughs> so I was like, oh, kind of fun. This is one I looked over and over and over in Lightroom. It, I didn't I didn't like it. And then I wanted to get the, obviously, the dead bushes in front and focus. And I didn't use my tripod and all that good stuff. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to make with what I can. So who says it has the foreground has to be in focus? So out of focus. So I focused on the moon. But I actually have a print of this one. Uh, I think, I think, I think. Yeah, I do. Um, not that you'll be able to tell. But um, there you are. I don't know. I like the print better. But everything's better in print anyhow. Um, but I don't know. It was kind of a fun one. I have something different. I don't normally shoot moons and it's just not my mantra. We're getting, now nah, we're getting to the end. Hopefully no one's falling asleep. <laughs> so New Mexico, Mesilla. So we're done with the park. I was done with the park. I didn't know what to do. I was going to go back to El Paso. Well, I actually did go back to El Paso Saturday night. No, Sunday night, Sunday night. Sorry. Like Sunday afternoon because I'd already been to the park, sunrise, sunset, Harsh light, good light, bad light, in between light. And I got what I wanted, I thought. So I thought, hell. So I typed in ghost towns and they were all three hours away. If I would have planned my day better, I could have hit and back. And then I realized that I was kind of stinky because I couldn't find the showers at the campground, but I didn't look very hard. It was just me, myself, and I, to be honest. <laughs> so I wasn't around anybody. So I thought, hell, I can't get on a Southwest flight and be the stinky person. So I was like, I rented a hotel room. Plus I was sick and tired of sleeping in the back of an SUV. So 
on the way back, I thought, what's a long way back to El Paso? Because I have like eight hours, six hours, well, probably six hours before my hotel check-in. So I Googled ghost towns, cool things to see, whatever. And Mesilla, New Mexico came up. And I was like, him and Han and him and Han, like, do I go? Do I not go? Do I whatever? And I went and I'm kind of glad I did. So Mesilla, um, actually I actually have a print of this one too in that pile. Mesilla, I was the coolest little place in the world. Has a, a mission there. The very like New Mexico, New Mexico. -y. That's not a word, but I'm going to make it up like town. Like things when I think of the Southwest, color and, a, a, you know, Adobe kind of thing and all that cool stuff like that, that true heart of the Southwest kind of thing, what I see. And I could be totally wrong. Maybe that's not what everybody else thinks. But um, this was one that I was like, eh, you know, whatever. And if I remember, oh, what did it, it's a, uh, what is it? The bed next to the window or the bed something window, whatever I called it. Um that's, I think, all this is, is this um, demystified from Spanish to English. Translated is the word I was looking for. Um, but this was one I was just like, I walked around the town center, as you kind of call it, like the little courtyardy area. Um, they're actually holding, I think it was a Catholic church mass in the morning. I don't know. Somebody was there doing something. Um, and they did. Oh, love the purple sky. also like the abstract sign. Thank you, Mary. Um and I wandered, I walked every block, like in a circle and went to the next block and in a circle and I went all around. It was super cool because they had like a farmer's markety kind of thing set up, like people were selling jewelry they're making. So um, I just wandered around and I guess you'll see my musings here momentarily. So I thought this one was fun. Um, I'm not much of a black and white guy only because I can't do it, to be honest. Um, I have a very strict thought process in my head that I'm just not good at post-processing black and white, we'll say that. And there's, I just, when I know I'm going to do black and white, I see it. And this is how I envisioned it. I wanted white lettering and very kind of crunchy crunchiness going on because that's what it was. We're all storytellers. Ah, this one, Signal Lost. Um, I don't know. I maybe, if anybody's familiar with Chuck Kimmerly, um, He's an awesome black and white photographer. Maybe I was trying to channel him because I was trying to play contrast off the window there. And But I called it lost, a signal lost because there's that little decrepit antenna it fell over. I don't think anybody lived in this house at all. It was very small, um, but it was super cool. Um, I don't know. That's what I loved about it. It was everything it had. Everything in Messiah had character. Everything. Like here I have to look for character. Like character was around the corner all over the place. And I promise we're wrapping up here soon. Ah, so here's the mission. This is the first photo I took there. This one I knew exactly was going to be black and white. Knew it. I wish I had some big white puffy clouds, but guess what? There's no clouds. So I worked with what I had. So I kind of like that gradient in the sky, but it was super something different. Um, like I said, you don't see a lot of black and white from me. Ah, love this one too. Um, what did I call this one? Ah, the colorful invitation, I think, is what I named it. And what I love about New Mexico is there's color. Like, you don't see that in the Midwest. We see a red barn. It's about as much color as we get. Unless somebody's got an ugly something they've painted yellow or pink or whatever. We don't see bright colors. So I loved this was the like the blankets hanging in the window were all different colors. And then you had that very drabby, muty, kind of adobe, not red, but tan. And that nice pop of color um that's what caught my eye um and people are looking at me like who is this weirdo and if you've probably followed me for a while you know i on occasion do um hey don it's awesome i sorry i got really excited don has had problems getting on lately so hey oh thank you um oh you're welcome i always like sharing stuff with you guys um so everybody's like god like if you followed me for a while you know i shoot lots of i well in the past i go through a phase i like windows and doors so if I'm in a city area or a town, I'm always looking at windows and doors. And this one just was like, hey, color. Um, come on. Oops. Sorry. Let me back up here. There we are. Yeah, that works. Sure. God love technology. There's the button I'm looking for. Come on. And more windows. Um, I thought this one this one was going to be black and white. I do have it in black and white. I just haven't figured it out, I don't think yet. But 
I love that like they fixed the uh, the Adobe if that's what you want to call it. I don't know the coatings, um, and they never painted it. And this window's broke in the bottom right hand corner, and it's kind of hanging out. It's my kind of thing. It's crunching, old, and it's broken. Um, but it was super kind of a I don't know. It was just a super I don't know. I just loved it. <laughs> to be honest, I mean, Messia was super cool. So it's very historic. So if you're ever down in that area, you got to go. Definitely got to go. Ah, the door. I told you I love doors. Um, so weathered welcome. So actually, I have a photo that I didn't put in here. I meant to and I forgot, but it's the whole door. But it was a very ornate. Like, I loved everything down there because they all had like a courtyard, like a wall and a door that went into the courtyard and then actually to their actual door of the house. And this was one was again, probably a super bright blue door at one point, but over time, paints cracked, weathered, and it's all gone. And that's what I loved about it. Plus I like the old, uh, kind of the bell up there and your handle. So I actually had this one shot in three by four, four by three ratio. And then I was like, ah, square. I like square, it's something different. Oh, Mary, love the color variation in the last photo. Thank you. Uh, ah, I know, still holding steady with 14, 15. I know, right, Evan? bored anybody yet um <laughs> come on wow i wonder what that was all about hmm oh i think that was my last one and i had a bunch of oops ha i forgot to uh take out all my extra slides oh well oh coming up on late night exposures we're at the end i'm sorry that was not a very good transition to the end but so Oh, and I, too many Christmases. Well, I left up March 4th. I'm a hot mess today. I'm sorry. So next week, I have two exciting things. So I told you last week that obviously we were doing Exploring the Southwest tonight. But on the 11th, we're doing one called Putting the Art Back in Fine Art. So we're going to talk, what is fine art? What do we classify it as? Does it have to be black and white? Does it have to be color? But I said I had two super exciting things along with it. But I didn't want to like let the cat out of the bag yet just in case it wasn't happening. So I'm having my first guest next week. So I'm actually bringing on the one and only Trent Fultz. So if anybody knows Trent Fultz photography, you probably know he's done some podcasts with me. He's been on Lynn Area Photo Club. Um, gotten to know Trent really well. Trent does a lot of, we're very cut in a sense from the same cloth as in we both love the Midwest. So let me tell you about something else before I forget. There is a Facebook group that Trent started that I also help moderate called Midwest is my muse. If you have not gone out, find it, search it up in the little search box on YouTube, go out there. It's a group based off where, you know, don't come and post 18 photos and like it's one post a day kind of thing is well thought out photographs, but we also have like some painters in there. It's, it's a very growing group. So join it if you haven't. Um, I think you have to answer some questions and then myself or Trent will approve you to be in kind of thing. But the other second exciting thing that Trent's gonna be on, but my new wonderful friends up at ACI, if anybody's familiar with ACI, it's American Color Lab in Cedar Falls, Waterloo area, has been very gracious Super gracious, more than I could ever hoped for. They're going to give away some door prizes. So it, you got to be there. You got to do it live next week. That's the thing. So next week, I'm going to have a QR code that pops up on the slide at the end. And I need you to like scan it with your phone. And if it works like it should, I just need an email address. That's what I need. Um, so I can prove that people showed up. Um, but... The door prizes, everybody who attends is going to get 30% off, I believe, a fine art print or an order. But one lucky person, one lucky person is going to get 100 freaking dollars, $100 for an order. I think that's super generous of them. So um, if you have not liked ACI, go out, um, go out, like their Facebook page, all that stuff. Um, I've been super blessed between Think Tank and especially ACI right now um, to like do some of this stuff and ProMaster. Um, they sent me some gear to test at White Sands along with Think Tank. So that was super cool. So there's more of that coming in the future, hopefully. But, um, oh, what is uh name of Trent's Facebook page? Well, Trent is Trent Fultz Photography. 
That's his commercial photography business page. And then it's Midwest is my muse, M-U-S-E, for the group. Um, but so it's been super happy. So go out and like ACI, follow them. They're always doing cool stuff. They had a really cool behind the scene video today of like some custom framing. But I can't thank them enough because obviously I don't print a lot. And especially through them, I'm new. So next week, I'll talk a little bit about it. But putting the art back in fine art, um, I'm going to start doing a fine art print store. Um, I've been wanting to do it for a very long time, but it's just such a monumental task of selling a print is easy if somebody buys it, but it's the beyond that of the shipping and the crap that I hate. Well, the reason I fell into ACI's lap is they actually for $10 a month, $10, think about this, $10 a month. If you want to sell fine art prints or sell any of your work or attempt to try it, $120 a year is all you're going to pay in the end. But all you do is you go in, uh, Tom, Tom was awesome. If I, I think that was Tom. He's one of their sales rep guys. He did a demo for me, showed me how to build out my store. And then it's super easy. And I loaded my photo. I'm in the process of loading photos, pricing things. And then you, let's say, I don't know, Sally orders a print from you. You get an order notification. You set up a Stripe account. The money goes to your account. And guess what ACI does? They print and ship. Bam, right to Sally's house. Hands off for you. So something you want to do. It's why I fell into ACI's lap. So again, thank you to ACI for so much cool stuff for me. Um, and I got two more slides here. I wonder what they are. <laughs> ah, thank you, right? There's the thank you slide. Um, as always, thank you guys for showing up. Um, I'm, hey, we had a steady good 14 or 15 tonight. I thank you for that. If you're a photographer person, um, I'll probably try to work on it tomorrow. I need to post on the, 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 my Facebook page, all the, um, stuff. So I think after fine art, we're going to talk about composition and some other things that I'm going to, I think I got everything figured out through, uh, April. So I'll get that posted here. Oh, awesome. Uh, my grandma joined me. That is wonderful. Um, I, I know I texted Aunt Linda today and said, hey, so I'm glad Grandma enjoyed it. Uh, Evan, thank you. Thank you, as always. I'm glad you liked it. So, again, thank you guys for the support and everything. You know where I'm at every Saturday night, usually, 90% of the time. Um, we will see. I will see everybody next week, hopefully, again, uh, for putting art back in fine art. Uh, you are welcome, Connie. And we're just going to have a kind of fun little chat with Trent, really. Um, so, Oh, it says there's our, uh, uh, oh, ACI is American Color Imaging. Oh, you are welcome, welcome, Lisa. I can't talk tonight. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you for attending. So, yeah, so who knows what my shenanigans will be next. I don't know um, what I'll be up to. So there's always something posting. I am actually probably going to start photographing more neon lights. I've got a litany of uh, theaters on my list now. So, again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Boy, I cannot talk tonight. I am on the way out. So as always, if you got questions, you know where to find me, Justin Tedford Photography, Justin Tedford uh, Photography on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, where else am I at these days? YouTube for all the reruns of this. That's what we want to call it. Um, this obviously goes live. You are welcome, Mary. And then thanks, Peggy. And what else is I going to say? There's one other spot. Eh, you know. Oh, tedfordphoto.com. So you get all my links there. So again, thank you guys very much. I'm going to sign off and I will see you all next week. Thanks, guys.